Hi folks and welcome back to my channel and in this video we're going to build a spray boot. And you might remember in one of my previous videos I did refer to the fact that I would build a spray boot to paint all the panels of the Lotus Elise and the panels of Old Rusty. Well this is what this video will be about. I'm going to create a paint boot which is about 3.6 meters by 3 meters or 12 feet by 10 feet. And it's not that big because I'm not going to paint a complete car. I'm always painting parts of a car. But of course you could build a bigger one. Now I'm going to build it with a wooden frame and then on the wooden frame I will put these OSB plates onto that. Um, very straightforward, very simple and at the end I will insulate the outer side because I actually want to warm it up. A paint boot has to meet specific requirements. The first one is that it should be dust free. So that's why I'm going to build an enclosure which is actually dust free. But that also means that I have to have filters that let fresh air in. Because at the end I want to extract the fumes that I generated while I'm spraying. So I'm going to need a ventilator, an exhaust filter and an intake filter. So these are the things I absolutely must have to have a proper working paint boot. Now in terms of the ventilator or turbine it has to be spark free because if you start spraying with solvent based paints you got to make sure that you get no explosions and that's the last thing you want to have happening. If you paint with water based paint only then it's no issue. So I'm going to go for an induction engine and not a brush based uh, engine in the ventilator or turbine. I also will have to heat up the boot because paint must be heated up and where I live it's not all that warm. So I'm going to use infrared panels which are about 1 meter 20 by 60 or that would be about um, three, uh, 4 feet by 2 feet and I'm going to put about 5 of them in, 4 on the sides and then 1 on the ceiling. And then at last you will have to have lighting uh, and the lightning uh, I'm going to use in the boot is going to be uh, TL lights but then with an enclosed armature because you can't have um, fumes getting into it because that also could cause an explosion. So this is what we uh, are going to build. So it's going to take a little bit of time so I cannot make this video in one go. But if you're interested to see how I do it then keep watching. It may actually come in a couple of parts. But we're going to start with creating the frames. And I'm going to use five of these panels in the back side and six in the length. If I look on these panels they have a coverage area of 76 and a half centimeters. To build the wooden frames they have to be the right length. So I know that the uh, width of a single board is 76.5 centimeters and I'm going to place six of them. So that gives me a total length of four meters uh, and that's going to be the length. Now the height of the panels is two meters fifty. So that's all right. Now for the back side, um, so the back side, uh, that is about five panels. So this is 76.5 times five is 33.75. So that's going to be the size of the frames I have to build. So we're going to measure the length first of the frame, which was 405 centimeters. Uh, so let's mark that. Let's uh, draw the marker on that one. And we do this twice, so for every side. And now we can cut it. So I'm going to continue cutting all these pieces of wood so we can build the first frame. So now we're going to mark the top and the bottom every 60 centimeters and that's where we'll have the vertical pillars and now let's mark it so let's check the angles so guys we mark the upper and the lower part then we put the uh, uprights in and we align them all and then I put some tension belts on so now it's solid and I can now start nailing the thing together. That's how easy that is. Okay. Here we go. Okay. 
Right, I've built the first frame, I nailed it all together, so now I'm going to build the second frame. So this will be the left side and the right side of the spray boot. Uh, I used just ordinary wood, as you've seen, uh, but you could use any kind of uh, material that you have. It all depends on the price where you live. Wood over here is not too bad, uh, but you can use metal studs, that's what they use for drywall. And in fact, instead of the wooden boards I'm going to use, uh, you could uh, use uh, drywall. It's all up to you, whatever is most economical for you. Uh, you can bolt the frame together, you can screw it together, you can nail it together, everything goes. Huh? As long as you have a solid frame, because the frame has to be solid enough. And it also has to be thick enough. So I'm having about 10 centimeters, uh, or this is about four inches of, of a height of the wood because I need to insulate it later uh, with rock wool or any other uh, insulation material because the paint boot has to be warmed up. So let me finish this one up and then I will carry on um, with the last part which is the back part. The door will be something different. Now you might have noticed that I'm using these spanners um, and that's to keep it together uh, otherwise uh, you can't hold it. And it's always good to build the second frame on top of the first one, as I've done here, because then you don't need to uh, measure too much and just align it up and then you're good to go. So uh, I guess I'm going to start shooting in the first couple of nails. And always wear safety goggles with this kind of stuff, because that's dangerous. All right, so I'm just going to align it. Very easy. We just tag along. The left and the right frame are now completed and now I'm going to build the back frame. And I'm going to build it on top of the other two frames so it's exactly the same dimensions. That is very easy because that way you only have to measure once. Otherwise you would have to measure always the same distance for the uh, uprights. And now you don't have to. Uh, you know, you just place them on top of each other. So let me... Um, Put the first piece together here and then uh, we can start cutting some more wood and nail it together. It's all very easy to do, nothing really special. Uh, it just is a little bit of woodwork. And for a guy who is a little bit handy, like all of you, that should be no problem. There we go. Just going to line it up properly so uh, we can put it all back together as it should. So let's uh, start measuring the cross members because that gives it extra strength. That's number one. Number three. All right, folks. Meanwhile, um, I placed the frame, the left, the right, and the back side in place, and uh, I leveled it already. I'm going to keep these corners in place where the back end joins the left hand side end, and uh, I'm going to use these clamps to hold them in place so I can align everything before we start nailing things. So now I have to make sure it's level in all kind of directions and I have placed clamps on there for now to keep it in place. Of course the front isn't finished yet. And you also want to make sure that everything is square. And a very good way to check if things are square is to measure diagonal from corner to corner like so and that distance should be the same. We got the framing up. It's aligned, uh, so now we can start putting the boarding up. Uh, but I'm going to place all the boarding first inside, and I don't think I can do it still today. Uh, it's already 5 o'clock in the afternoon, so we may have to continue tomorrow.
So for the boarding, I'm going to use OSB, and that stands for Oriented Strand Board. It's pretty strong, water resistant, and not very expensive. It comes in different thicknesses. I have gone for 12 mil, but you can get it at 18 and 24. But for the walls, 12 is more than enough. So, putting all this up will be a job for tomorrow. I'll see you later. Bye.